Hey guys, I'm really interested in the space sector, so I wanted to talk about this with you. You know, I've recommended some of these stocks. One I wanted to talk about in particular is Intuitive Machines, ticker symbol L-U-N-R. I'm interested in this company because they're the first commercial company to put or land on the moon since the Apollo 17 mission in 1972. And so they landed on the south pole of the moon. And so we know it tipped over twice now they've had that happen, but I do believe they're going to get there. And then this is going to open up so much opportunity because I do believe there's critical minerals and they're going to do more research and all this on the moon. And so they're going to lead the way there. So that's why I like that company because they're pretty unique and they're already, like I said, putting an, uh, a spacecraft on the moon right now. Okay. And I think, like I said, they're going to perfect that with time. All right. And then investors will come back to this name. So I do like that price point on that one. Okay. There's also Rocket Lab, which is my favorite because it has, you know, a better balance sheet. Obviously, they still don't have a great balance sheet because a lot of these space stocks, right, they're working their way towards profitability, which will take time. But I do like that they can become the next SpaceX, potentially. Rocket Lab does similar things to what SpaceX is doing, all right? SpaceX actually just had one of their uh, flights, their payloads, and it blew up. So maybe more people or more companies would or maybe uh, Rocket Lab would get more deals, okay, especially with, you know, what's going on, Elon Musk and Trump and being distracted. So you never know, that could benefit Rocket Lab, which is why it's actually getting some good buying volume right now. And that's what you want to look for, guys. Look for stocks that are performing well. It's going to be a stock picker's market. We have oil prices going up, as we know. There's issues, Iran, Israel. And so, and you never know about inflation. If oil is going to show up in inflation reports, obviously it could tick higher, which could worry people. So this, these next few months, guys, especially with seasonality, aside from July, right, end of June and into August is usually seasonably not so good for stocks. Actually, crypto is better in August, okay? But anyways, it could be choppy here. So expect where we could retest, you know, what used to be, you know, resistance can now serve as support. So don't be surprised if the market wants to saw off a couple percent or so to back test, that would be healthy. And then hopefully it could rip higher from there. Like I said, especially, you know, later this year when we're out of se uh, poor seasonality. Okay, but you want to be looking for sectors that are strong. So the space sector is strong. So Rocket Lab showed some good buying volume. Lunar hasn't yet, L-U-N-R or Intuitive Machines. But I do like after this dip that it's, you know, after the big move it did make, it consolidated. And I think it's going to get ready for its next move soon. So I like that one. Um, there's also Planet Labs, which you guys know I've listed as well. And so the subscription revenue I like with that. And a lot of these companies, they can work with other countries and get these contracts where if these countries want to use their satellites, right, to help out with weather, right, or, you know, environmental stuff. There's in defense, like the U.S., obviously the defense sector is big right now. We know the Trump wants in the bill to increase defense spending. And so that's why I like this space as well, because not only do you get access to space, like we talked about, but also the defensive side of things where can they help out the government, okay? So obviously these government contracts, right? They need to keep coming in, obviously, which it sounds like if they're spending more that they should be able to, but it's something to monitor. But that's why I'm okay buying even Big Bear AI under four bucks a share, the AI of military even though their financials are not good, I do believe the CEO with time can keep improving their financials. And the fact that they're expanding internationally, they're working with major US airports now with their biometric software. There's, you know, they're diversifying. And this is what I like to see. Some of you have asked, I thought you didn't like Big Bear AI. And that was true when it was at, you know, higher up between eight and 10 bucks a share. But now that it's under four again, and people thinking that this could be the next Palantir, even though I believe they're nowhere close to that. It doesn't matter what I think. I just know retail traders like this, and I can see the stock having a huge moment again, especially that they're involved with AI in the military as well. So that's why I'm okay to just know it's a spec stock. But again, a lot of these small caps we know are kind of like 10X or bust types of stocks. That's why you keep the position small. And I want to let you know too that I am, I have decided I'm putting a stop loss on all of my small cap stocks, guys. Okay, I don't like to lose more than 7%. So just in case, right? Because I always think in the back of my head too that these smaller companies, they're gonna have a tough time to compete against the big dogs. And while you know maybe they get bought out if they're good businesses, over time, I believe the big companies keep getting bigger because they can gobble up the small fish. And if Trump, you know, with this the tax bill, you know, obviously interest rate cuts, that's why small caps I like, you know, they have the chance to go up. But then I want to take my initial investment out like you've heard me say. I don't want to overstay my welcome because, like I said, the big dogs really dominating, right? They have Because the, we know the big cap companies have hordes of cash, right? 
How can the little guy compete with that? A lot of times, right, micro cap, small cap companies have to raise capital. They have to dilute shareholders by issuing more shares. And so that's why, guys, just remember that these are riskier for a reason and you don't want to overstay your welcome. So whenever you get that nice pop and not everyone's going to do that, that's why you play a basket of them, right? And let's say you want to buy, let's say overall, I'm just going to make up an easy example. Let's say you want your portfolio to be $10,000 total. I would not recommend having more than 10% in the small cap stocks. So for example, that would be a thousand, right? If you have 10,000 overall, maybe you're in the big cap names, right? You know, the ones that are involved with AI, you guys know the ones that I really like, okay? The safer ones that we know are gonna be around years down the road from now. And then the 10%, right, of 10,000 would be a thousand dollars total. So you could have 10 stocks, for example, 10 small cap, right, high risk, high reward stocks. And maybe you put a hundred dollars in each of those and that's your small cap portfolio, okay? So you wanna keep it smaller and I would still put a stop loss in, okay? Because of how, like I said, if they decide to go a lot lower that you can enter lower and have your cash available, that's up to you, like I said, if you wanna have that stop loss just because they're riskier, okay? But I decided I'm going to do that so I don't have to hold the bag and then I'll just try to re-enter at an even better price and then eventually it'll catch as we get closer to interest rate cuts and then as soon as I hear, you know, that interest rate cuts are coming or imminent, a hint from Powell, whatever it is, that's when I can add more into the momentum up, right? Versus dollar cost averaging as it's going down, right? That takes patience. And some people, you know, if you dollar cost average a couple of times and you keep seeing it go lower, that can mess with you. So that's why I wanted to bring that up. That's why you can have a stop loss. You don't have to play that game and then wait for some momentum later. So just wanted to point that out. If that helps you, some of you guys I know prefer it that way to catch momentum up versus catching, right? Possibly a falling knife. You just never know. So anyways, guys, hope that helps you and enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. Do something you love today, guys. Remember, on the weekends especially, it's good to get away from stocks if you can, at least for a day. Obviously, it's good Sunday night to prepare for your week. You always want to have a plan of attack of what to do. And remember, always index sector stock. You want to look what index has been performing the best. Space has been performing well. The nuclear power sector has been performing well. I think semiconductors, because of the new oil, that chart can still recover. It hasn't even gotten back to all-time highs with the socks, for example. So, But just remember, there could be consolidation in the short run. Don't let that scare you. Keep the long-term mindset. And like I said, we're, I think we're going to have another leg higher eventually. So it's exciting, guys. So keep following me. I'll take care of you guys. Know I'm going to take you to the promised land. If you become a member, obviously, guys, that's what's going to benefit you the most, okay? But again, enjoy your weekend. Do something that you love. Enjoy being with family and friends. And try to help somebody out, right? It's all about giving back without expecting anything in return, whether it's volunteering or just holding a lady's groceries, taking her to the car, opening a door for people, right? Let's just keep showing love and kindness to the world. That's what it's all about in the end.